Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Rustbuck Collector here, and today we are taking a look at probably my most anticipated Halo item of all of 2022. And that's saying a lot since it's only February, but yeah, today we're taking a look at the GameStop exclusive Warthog with Arbiter and Master Chief. These are the Halo 3 versions of the characters from the classic Halo Warthog run, the final mission of Halo 3. And this could not be more incredible. For someone like me who grew up on Halo 3 as kind of their introduction to Halo, this is perfect. This is everything I wanted out of the World of Halo line from Jazzwares. And this is, of course, in the World of Halo line, the 4-inch line from Jazzwares with the more scaled-down characters for the sake of world building, which allows us to get amazing things like this, like a giant warthog and two action figures to man the different places that you can man on a warthog, all three of them. And like I mentioned, this is a GameStop exclusive, so if you're interested in picking this up, check the website. I'll try and link it down in the description where you can find this. I think it's still up for, like, technically it's up for pre-order still, but if you pre-order, it should ship relatively quickly. They have the inventory in the warehouse, and you might even be able to find this in your GameStop store, in a physical location. It just depends on the GameStop. I know mine, uh, locally, they don't really order in a lot of physical collectibles anymore, so it's usually based on uh, pre-orders, but your mileage may vary based on your local store. So, so yeah, without further ado, let's take a look at the packaging, then we'll break it open, take a look at all the cool parts that come with this set, and then we'll do some comparisons to the previous Warthog we've gotten, as well as some of the previous figures we've gotten. I am really excited to dig into this because this is all new sculpting and molding. It's a new Warthog, new figures, nothing reused, repurposed, you know, no recycling here. This is a fresh brand new item and I am I'm super excited for it. The front of the package here looks really nice. Of course, it comes with the green Halo uh, graphics that we've come to expect with Halo Infinite merchandise that is across the board with all merchandise that I've seen, not just with the Jazzwares product line. Down here, you know, the basic stuff about who it comes with. We already know who it comes with. Some assembly required. 13 pieces in total, eight years and up. We're a little bit above that here. Down in the corner, we have the 20 year anniversary logo there because like the uh, Target exclusive four pack and the uh, GameStop Spartan collection two pack, uh, it's part of the 20 year anniversary thing. So it's all the characters that we know and love from the previous Halo games, the legacy characters, and it seeks to pay homage to, you know, all those characters that we grew up with and just, you know, have a special place in all of our hearts, I think. Then turning the box around, we have this amazing graphic. I think this is probably my favorite back to a uh, to a Halo packaging yet. And I mean, really, this is kind of just a uh, screenshot from Halo 3, but it is an epic screenshot from Halo 3. I think everyone that ever has played the campaign remembers where they were when they first jumped in a warthog and ran through a crumbling Halo ring to get to the forward onto Dawn. And I have so many memories from this very mission, whether it was doing it with friends or whether it was trying to do it on Legendary for the first time. No matter what, it's a great screenshot and just such a classic Halo 3 moment. But without further ado, let's break the packaging open and take a look at the figures in hand. And with the box removed, this is what we are left with. We have the two figures, we'll save those for later. We have the body of the Warthog, four tires, and of course the turret and two terrain bases for the figures to stand on. But really, we're not going to put them on the stands. Of course, we're going to put them inside the Warthog. What else would you do with them? For your consideration, there are instructions, but I think for most people, this is a pretty straightforward assembly, popping the four wheels on and popping the turret on. And I guess there is a little antenna there as well. So just kind of popping the things in where they, they logically go. And there we have it, fully assembled, out of the packaging, 
And wow, <laughs> I mean, this is so cool to have a Halo 3 Warthog, Master Chief, and RB together from Halo 3, from just the game that I grew up on and have so many memories from, especially in the campaign, you know, doing co-op and just all that, just all those memories. This is the perfect nostalgia trip in a box. <laughs> just one box, one nostalgia trip. It's as easy as that. Let's get these out of the way, and let's start things off by talking about this, the Warthog. It looks really, really good. They've gone ahead and done an entirely new sculpt for all of this, because there's really nothing they could reuse from the two Warthogs. I mean, they are extremely unique from game to game, especially between the Bungie and 343 era, and we now have the Halo 3 Warthog represented here very nicely. Now personally this has always been my favorite Warthog design. It just always had that nice sleek look. It kind of, you know, kind of looked like a like a puma you might say. And it just has a lot of cool features. And especially I can remember in game I was always testing the different damage features in this game. So like I could uh, destroy the front bumper here and I could break the windshield and just stuff like that that made the game so lifelike and so detailed. Now in terms of what we have here for a toy version of that Warthog, we do not have uh, destructible elements unless maybe you hit this with a hammer, but we do have four rubber tires which is really nice. It's not just, you know, molded plastic. We actually have real rubber here for the tires. It just feels like a nice detail, like a, a little bit of a premium detail if you will there. The molded uh, winch up front is really nice. We have the headlights painted on. There's a few maybe blemishes there, but you know, nothing major, nothing that's like, oh no, it's a, it's a misprint. Now around here on the back, I don't know if you can really see that, I'm, I have to hit this with a lot of light for it to be visible in camera, but uh, there's a little bumper sticker, or rather a license plate that says WC21JHT, and I don't know if that's technically there in game. I don't know if that's a, uh, a Canon bumper sticker, or if maybe that's a little Easter egg that the designers sneaked in there for something, or maybe literally that's just like a part number that they they put there to, to blend it in. I don't know, but it's curious nonetheless. I thought that was worth pointing out because I'm not really sure that that is something that you would see uh, in game there. Now, of course, the most important play feature here is the turret, and that spins around very, very nicely, actually. Like, there's not a lot of friction. I can do that just with one finger, spin it all the way around. This assembly here, maybe like the ammo canister, is actually attached with a ball joint. You may have seen that in the assembly portion of this video, which allows some really unique articulation. You can get it upwards, you can get it downwards, especially if it's, you know, facing reverse, you can actually get that pretty far downwards. And then up here is articulated with a hinge, we'll spin that back around, to where you can articulate just the, the machine gun portion of it up and down. And of course there are two little feet pegs there for any figure to attach to, just to give them a little bit more stability when they're riding on the back of a warthog through a collapsing halo ring. And of course this antenna is properly boingy, you know, you can just boing it, boing, 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 boing. Now something that really is catching my eye is the internals here that really would kind of go unnoticed in this because, you know, the exterior is what most people would be looking at, but in the interior, we have a lot of detail sculpted in there. Now here in the center console, we have two medical packs or some sort of first aid canisters. Coming around a little bit, you start to see all the details coming out of the console, like this right here, which is like the gear shifter, I assume. You got a radio or stereo system, some sort of communication array there. Down here, it almost looks like you got a cassette deck. So maybe in the year 2552, they're a little bit retro with their Warthog designs. And then of course on this side you have the steering wheel as well as the little heads up display there. This steering wheel does not turn, but I mean that's okay, that's not really a detail that I need. And I'm just really impressed overall with the detailed interior that we're getting here with this pack. And of course, you know, if you wanted to, if you're a customizer, you can go in and you could paint all these little dials, maybe get some slide decals for some of the little screens in there. There is a lot that you can do with that level of sculpt detail. And of course, for those that maybe want to take this down a flight of stairs or roll this around on the carpet, it does have a really good roll. Like this, you know, those tires don't have a lot of friction. You can get some really good motion out of it. And I'm just thinking of it in terms of like, as a kid, that was important to me. So if there's any young Halo fans out there that want to pick up a Warthog, maybe uh, if you're a parent thinking for a kid's gift, this is a fun toy as well. Like, of course, for a Halo fan like me, it's great on a shelf, but this is just a cool 
truck with a mounted machine gun on the back if uh, if you have kids and you want something like that. Though I must admit, even as an adult, there is some temptation just to, you know, load this up with some Marines, Master Chief, and Arbiter, and then just, you know, take it for a spin, because that's what Warthogs are good for. Now, for comparison, there is only one other Warthog to look at here, and that is, of course, the Halo Infinite Warthog that we got pretty much from the get-go of this Halo line from Jazzwares. Side by side, they look really, really cool. You could have a motor pool of these being worked on by Marines and whatever. And looking at them this way, it also allows you to really start to see the differences between the different game designs for the Warthog. In terms of size comparison, they're pretty much the same. They're about the same length. They're about the same height. You know, they're, they're Warthogs. They fit together as as like an evolution of design and they work really well together. I think this one from Infinite has a little bit more paint detail overall. There's a lot more uh, silver brush weathering, little decals here and there across the design, and even some details on the inner console there. And that may be just down to uh, budget on the overall design of these packs. It might be a design choice because in Halo 3 there was certain graphical limitations that we don't see with Halo Infinite just due to it being an Xbox 360 game. And so if you're trying to go true to the original game, there's, you know, a more uh, a sleek and shiny look to it just because of technology at the time. So it could be either one or maybe it's a mix of both. Either way, I don't think it detracts from it whatsoever. This is a very nice, clean Warthog here. And if you wanted to go about damaging it up, make it a little bit more grungy, you could definitely do that with some paints and some dry brushing. Either way, though, I am really impressed with this Warthog overall. It just has so much good detail packed in there on pretty much every square inch of it. And I know a lot of that might just be some nostalgia talking because I absolutely love the design of a Halo 3 Warthog. But I mean, just look at that. It is so cool looking to have this in hand, finally. And even having them side by side just like this is a very nice way to display them. You could have sort of an evolution between the two Warthogs with the Halo 3 Warthog and Chief and the Halo Infinite Warthog and Chief. No matter how you choose to display your Warthog though, I think this is absolutely awesome. But it is missing something and that something is the figures. You can't display a Warthog without the figures. And what better figures to have than Arbiter and Master Chief? I mean, you can't really name a more classic duo from the Halo series. Except maybe Master Chief and Cortana. But you know what? You can't name a better duo than Master Chief and Arbiter. Uh, that's, a, my, that's my final word on it. So let's start things off with accessories. First up, we have two land terrain bases here. Pretty much what we've gotten with everything else, so nothing special here, but it's nice to have these nonetheless, at least as extras, because I think pretty much everyone's going to be putting Master Chief and Arbiter in the Warthog. Next up, we have Master Chief's Assault Rifle here, and this is the same sculpt that we've seen with the Target Exclusive 4-pack. You can see here there is really no difference between the two, and that's okay, because the Assault Rifle really doesn't change until you get to Halo Reach, so this is a perfect sculpt to represent that. Of course, on the back it has a little peg there, which allows it to slot directly into the back of Master Chief or any other Spartan that you want to give it to. So it's a really nice way to store the weapons, especially when they're sitting in the Warthog. We'll have to test and see if that works, though, that they'll actually sit there perfectly with the weapon on their back or not. Next up we have the Halo 3 Covenant Carbine, and this is the first time that we have ever gotten this weapon. I hope it's not the last, but... This is one of the excellent weapons that they introduced in Halo 2, carried it over to Halo 3, and it definitely became a fan favorite for people trying to just get rid of pesky grunts in a quick fashion. The sculpt work and paint work here are both fantastic. I think it would have been nice if we could have gotten a little light green hit right here on the top for the little view display there, or the ammo canister, whatever it is. I always thought it was kind of a combination of a scope and an ammo canister, but it's hard to say with these Alien Covenant guns. But apart from that, I think this is a really nice representation of the weapon. Of course, once again, it does have a peg there, allowing it to go, well, not on the back of Arbiter. It appears that he does not have a, uh, a back slot there for the weapon. However, it can go on the back of Master Chief, and that's what we'll do right there. So that's cool at the very least, and of course it will attach to other Spartans as well. Now as for the figures themselves, 
I just, I can't get over this just frame right here of Master Chief and Arbiter together. I don't really have any other representation of these characters other than my Joyride, Arbiter, and Master Chief. So it's so awesome to finally have a Halo 3 version in hand and just, they look so good together. Like there's something so classic about just seeing them together. There is a lot of really nice detail packed into these figures. Once again, like I mentioned before, they are entirely unique sculpts. So we're not seeing anything reused or repurposed from previous characters, apart from the weapon for Master Chief that is from the four pack. But even that is a relatively new sculpt. So we're seeing a lot of brand new stuff on these figures. We will start first with the Master Chief. Again, the detail here is very nice. The sculpt definitely represents that Halo 3 armor. This is the first time we've seen the Mark VI in the Halo 3 style, and hopefully not the last. I do hope that World of Halo will dive deeper into those legacy characters, and maybe I'm a little bit biased. You know, Halo 3 was that, that Halo for me. That's the Halo game for me, and so I am a little bit biased towards those characters, but this figure is especially nice, and once again, I can't get over just getting all new sculpt for it. While still mostly just a green spaceman, uh, Master Chief does have some weathering hits here on the figure, which is nice to see and is accurate to the character. You know, he has that blast going up his chest there. That stuck around since Halo 2, I think, though I don't know if we ever saw exactly what caused that. I mean, Mjolnir armor is very durable and kind of makes you wonder what was, uh, what was so rough and tough that it dented his chest plate. It's sort of like... I guess I always looked at this little dent here as sort of like Boba Fett's helmet with the dent in it. You know, this is the this is the Boba Fett dent of Master Chief. Something else that I also really appreciate about this figure, just looking at it overall, is that the proportions are even correct. Because Halo 2 and 3 Master Chief have sort of weird proportions from the, the length of torso to the length of their limbs. The legs and arms on the model are slightly longer and the torso feels a little bit shorter. Um, and that's just something that was part of the game design, and they've actually represented that here. I feel like the torso is a little bit uh, short, and the arms, legs are a little bit longer, and that is really good attention to detail on this figure. Bringing in the uh, Halo Infinite Master Chief, you can even see here the, the torso difference and the arm difference. And you know, it's not something that really even needs to be included necessarily, but yeah, it's just one of those little things that gets added in that really sells the translation from game into, into plastic. Now then, for articulation on this figure, it's pretty straightforward. We'll try and just breeze through it real fast. At the head, we have a hinge and a swivel for the neck, so you can swivel it side to side. You can hinge it back to there and forward to there. Hinge and swivel at the shoulders, so all the way around. You can hinge it up to 90, and then here at the elbow, another hinge and swivel, so swivel all the way around. Hinge to 90 there as well, and I do believe that they've gone ahead and improved the, uh, the cutouts there for the elbow, allowing it just to crunch a little bit more smoothly to 90 degrees. And that is just really appreciated for weapon handling and things like that, just for more dynamic poses overall. Then down to the wrist, we have a hinge and swivel once again, so swivel all the way around, in and out wrist here, and likewise on this wrist, all the way around, and another hinge and swivel in and out. Now that does bring up one of the points that I always have with these figures, is that uh, I would prefer that they had one up and down wrist and one in and out wrist. I've just found that that is more uh, compatible with articulating for weapon holding, but it is still a perfectly fine articulation point. He can still hold his weapon. He can still look down line of sights. It's not a big deal. It's just one of those small little things that like, you know, in a perfect world, that's one of the things that I would change. Next, moving down to the torso, I really like what they've done here for the this for this particular point of articulation, because it could be kind of tricky. You have this like under armor plate, and then you have the over torso plate here. And what they've done is they've molded the torso and this piece here as one, allowing the upper piece of the torso to be the point of articulation. I think that's pretty much the best case scenario for this type of like armor layout. Allows you to have some side to side, some forward, some back crunch, and there is a little bit of a twist here in the waist as well. So you can kind of get them in some more dynamic motion there as well. And overall, that's just a really nice detail there. I think that if they had gone ahead and attached this armor plate to the chest, it would have more limited his motion, especially the forward and back motion. Next, we move down to the hips, and once again, we have the standard ball joint and thigh swivel, so you can get him split out to there, you can get his legs forward to there, and you can get them back to there, 
and you can get them forward, swivel that little thigh swivel around and get a little bit more articulation forward that way. Then we move down to the knees, and this is one of the things that I kind of was wondering how exactly they would execute it because uh, he does have those little prongs like off the top of his knee pad. With the Halo Infinite Chief, he actually has like a secondary knee pad underneath the, the shin armor there. So that was a good way to hide that joint for them here. But in this case, they've basically just cut the top of the knee pad off and attached it to the middle of the joint there allowing that to double joint all the way back to there. Now mine does have a little bit of a sloppy paint job. Unfortunately, it seems like it's a little bit smeared and smudged on the edges. These joints are made from a softer plastic. You can kind of see the, uh, the flex that they have there in that joint. And so it may have affected how the paint is applied or like how the paint takes to that particular type of plastic. But that double knee joint still gets you a really good range of motion there. And I don't feel like the softer joint there is going to break or anything. It just has a little bit more play side to side. Then we move finally down to the foot and we have a hinge and swivel for the foot. Hinge it back to there, forward to there. And rather than having a rocker, we just have a swivel. So the foot can swivel all the way around there. And I guess that might be my other point with this figure. I do wish that that was a forward facing rocker because when you put this figure in a more dynamic pose, a bit more of an action pose, I found it tricky to get his feet flat on the ground and have them actually like stay there without having some loss of traction. Just as a quick five second pose here, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. This back foot doesn't lay flat on the ground. And if that peg was a rocker, it would allow that to, uh, to set there on the ground, give them a little bit more surface area on the ground, a little bit better balance. But you know, despite that, I still think it works. Like, I don't think it's a big issue. He still stands on his own just like that. Uh, it's more so a note like the wrist where it's like in a perfect world, I wish that was a rocker. I wish that that was an up and down joint. You know, it doesn't take away from the overall effect that this figure has on me where I really do love having a Halo 3 Chief in this scale, but it's just one of those little, uh, I guess nitpicks on my part for the uh, overall detail of the figure. And now I can finally do something that I have wanted to do for a very long time. I can do a side-by-side -side comparison of all three Master Chiefs from the World of Halo line. And there, there we have it. All three Master Chiefs side-by-side -side is such a cool look. We have the Combat Evolved one from the Target exclusive 4-pack obviously the Halo 3 version and the Halo Infinite version. This is pretty much the same as really any of them, but this one in particular is from the Target exclusive 4-pack. And I guess all we need now is a Halo 4 Chief to complete every era of his armor, since really this represents a good example of his Halo 2 and Halo 3 armor. There's a few changes that happen between the games, but, but not much. You just need to move this guy over, put a Halo 4 Chief there, and you've got everybody. It's so cool to see this. And for another cool comparison, we can take these two figures out and we can bring in Master Chief through the eras. We have the Halo 2 Joyride Master Chief. We're going to have to go upwards a little bit for that. And then we also have the Halo 3 McFarlane Master Chief, followed by the Jazzwares World of Halo Master Chief. I actually intended to do a, a, a single video about this, just a comparison of Master Chief through the eras but I couldn't get my hands on a Mattel Master Chief from Halo 4. That was the, the last one I needed because I wanted to showcase just the different brands and how they handled the different figures throughout the years because each one has its own, uh, its own take on the characters, you know. Joyride was the first and they had a lot of good points about their figures with some downsides, of course, as anything does. Then Halo 3 came along and we got the McFarlane line and those figures just had so much detail, though they did have quite a few issues with, uh, with breaking, at least in my experience. And with Mattel, I know that they tried to pioneer the removable armor in new ways, like you could basically strip the Spartans down to just their tech suits and then attach different armor plates, which I think is really cool. But I think quality control kind of dipped when it hit the Mattel figures. That's at least what people have said. And then we get to the World of Halo line from Jazzwares, and these figures are absolutely great. I love the scale. I think the scale is perfect for vehicles, for just like world building, so you can get play sets in this scale. You can mix and match with other toy lines. I think, you know, in the in the three and three quarter inch scale, the four inch scale, you have a lot more opportunities for mixing and matching. And in general, I like the feel of the Jazzwares figures. These feel very much like 
like toys, if that makes sense. These are something that I like as a collector, but I think that, you know, if I had kids and they were into Halo, this is something I'd feel very comfortable giving them to enjoy as well. Whereas things like this, even back in the day, they just seemed more brittle, uh, less uh, durable for a for a toy, for a proper toy, something that can be smashed into walls and actually played with and enjoyed. I feel like these are safe to do that with. I feel like these two are a little bit less so. But either way, it's a really fun comparison, one that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. So here we have it, Master Chief through the eras as far as toy brands go. And now for one final test with Master Chief before we move on to the Arbiter, let's give it a try with fitting him into the Warthog. Now I think he's going to fit best without the rifle now that I'm having a look at it. But let's just fit him right on in there. And let's see, got to reposition those feet a little bit. And just like that, he fits in rather nicely, actually. Very, very easy. Uh, you just got to kind of wiggle it around, get make sure that those feet are in the right position. If they catch on the seat down there, he won't sit just right in the seat. And there we go. I think that's actually a pretty good fit. I didn't feel like I was going to uh, damage any paint apps or anything by, like, trying to force him into the seat. I think he fit in pretty well, and... Yeah, for trying to fit a, uh, a bulky armored character into a vehicle like this, it went pretty smoothly. Tell me, when you first saw the World of Halo Arbiter action figure, were you blinded by its majesty? Here we have the Arbiter action figure, the heretic himself, and this is definitely the highlight of the pack. I mean, yes, Master Chief and the Warthog are cool, but this figure is just... It's so good. The gold on this figure, the wash over top of the gold to bring out all the sculpt details, it is absolutely stunning, and I am in love with it. Between all the different plates of armor, we have this purple and bluish purple jumpsuit, which I always thought was quite curious. I never really understood what it was in game, but it looks very nice here with the figure. It's well painted. All those lines and everything are represented and painted as well. And even if we get up nice and close here with the figure, we have some red details painted on the inside of his mouth, as well as a little eye there as well. That is just such cool attention to detail with this figure. And once again, when you get up close, you can just see the amount of sculpt work that has gone into this figure with all the little squiggly lines <laughs> all over his armor. I'm sure that they have some deep meaning to the prophets, you know, and to St. Helios, but I personally don't know what they're what they're representing. They just look really, really cool. Now, the only thing I really noticed with this figure when getting it out of the packaging was that he really, I mean, he can hold the weapon well, but he can't look down the line of sights, unfortunately, just because the bulkiness of his armor and the neck joint here, he really can't articulate well enough to look down the line of sights. You can extend this arm and get it relatively close, which I think is nice, but it's not going to be quite as nice as the way Master Chief was able to. But if you feel so inclined and you don't like the carbine, you can replace that with the Energy Sword. This is one that came with many different figures, including the Ghost Vehicle Pack, as well as just the Elite Warlord from Series 3. And I think that that is a, a much more iconic look for the Arbiter. You can see here just how nice that looks. I think it's great with both. I don't think that there's an issue with using the carbine, but personally, in my display, I think I'm gonna go the route of the energy sword. That's just, when I think of the Arbiter, I think of him wielding an energy sword. And now let's talk articulation on good old RB here, starting it up at the neck here. And unfortunately, this is the one, the one issue that I have with this figure. I love everything else about it. I just wish that maybe this neck joint could be reworked somehow. It is a hinge and a swivel, the hinge getting you up to there and really only down to there. And then the swivel allowing you to get some head articulation side to side, which I do think that gives him some good expressionism, but I just wish that there was a way to, to give more. But I think just given the overall complication of his armor there, it might not be possible without sacrificing some detail. So uh, unfortunately that might be as good as we can get just with the, the way that his armor is designed. Moving on down to the shoulders, we have a hinge and a swivel. So swivel all the way around here, hinge up to maybe like just under 90. Same thing over here, though this shoulder pad will inhibit that so it can go forward to there and back to there and then out to just right there. At the torso, we have a really nice range of motion with a good side to side there forward and back to there with that ball joint. And then down at the hips, we have the ball joint and thigh swivel so he can get forward to 
to a seated position fairly well. He can get back to right about there. And then you can actually extend his double knees if you felt so inclined and you could make a extremely tall elite just like that. But if you don't want to do that, you have two hinge and swivels here at the knees, the double knees, allowing you to crunch it all the way to there. That's a really nice joint. I really love to see that. You can bend it all the way back to there actually, which is really impressive. And then down to the foot, you have a hinge and swivel. So hinge all the way back to there, forward to there. And this actually has a side to side rocker so you can rock that back and forth. Somehow I almost forgot and didn't do the elbow and wrist here. So the elbow is a hinge and a swivel again as well. So you can straighten it to there. You can bend it to 90 degrees, swivel it all the way around. At the wrist, hinge and swivel all the way around, in and out, right there, just like that. And the hands are nicely sculpted to hold a variety of weapons. In fact, it's almost like he has two trigger fingers here, so maybe someday if we get a plasma rifle, we can give him two plasma rifles and have him dual wield. Now, I'm not totally sure, but I always thought that in-game the, uh, the pinky and the thumb were both technically thumbs, like they were on the outside of the weapon, and then these two middle fingers were on the inside, gripping it and pulling the trigger. I could be wrong about that, and maybe this is just a stylistic choice so that they hold the weapons better, because I could definitely see some issues if they went with the uh, the double thumb version of these hands, but either way, I don't think it's a big deal, it's just kind of a curiosity. Now then, getting him on the back of the Warthog is actually a pretty easy process. Like, he just goes on there very well, his feet can peg onto the base there, and he holds the grips well as well. I think that looks super, super cool. You can pose it up on like maybe some terrain or some diorama piece, have it look like they're ramping over some destroyed elements of Halo. But I mean, can you can you just name a cooler toy that has a more iconic duo? This is like getting the Millennium Falcon cockpit with Han and Chewie, right? Like that's what it is for Halo fans. And I think that there's a lot of people that are gonna wanna add this to their collection without even seeing this review. Like I think there's just gonna be people that need this on a shelf looking awesome. But I think that pretty much sums it all up. I absolutely love this pack. I know that I am a little bit biased, but I do think that there are a few areas that could improve. Like I mentioned with the knees there, as well as the wrist and the neck on Arbiter. There's, there's still points that do need maybe some tweaking, but overall, this is a really awesome pack and I absolutely love it. Now, retail for this is $39.99. I do believe I got free shipping. I think it ticked over enough on GameStop's website for for uh, free shipping, but there is tax, so you know, $42 total is what I think I paid for this. I am extremely happy with that value. The previous Warthog I think was $30, so if you tack on an extra figure, which is normally $10 as a, as a single carded figure, then you have $40 and there you go. The value is there. It's absolutely amazing for what we're getting. As I mentioned before, I will drop a link down below so that you can check this out. If it says it's for pre-order, drop a pre-order and it should ship soon because I think they're all in warehouse now. And maybe it'll stay in stock by the time this gets uploaded. I'm not totally sure, but check the link down there if you want to pick up one for your very own. Also check out the link tree down there if you want to check me out over on Instagram. I post toy photography, toy updates, just fun collector stuff there. And uh, yeah, just follow me over there through the link tree down below. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. I really do appreciate all of you that stick around on this channel because I know my upload has been uh, a little bit inconsistent lately. There should be some new content coming soon though. I have a really awesome 2022 haul that I'm gonna be showcasing as well as some more Star Wars and Halo reviews, but that's for next time. So as always, Thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful evening, noon, or night, depending on when you're watching this video. Be kind to one another, and as always, I will catch you all in the next video.